So let's go ahead and jump into some of the primitives that we have here. So we have the constant. The constant's really nice because all it is is a value from 0 to 1. In this case, it's height. So from 0 to 1, 100%, being the highest value. Uh, anywhere in between, obviously, is yeah, a little bit you know, here or there. Um, it's just like a giant square it's all it, or a cube. It's all it is, depending on the height value. Uh, you can use this a lot in generating textures and lo and values for um, textures. I do it when I'm using the rocky or the the snow erosion. And if I remember when we get around to it, I'll show you how I use it. But in any case, this is just a constant from you know zero percent up to hundred percent in height value, and it's a very basic, simple node. Let's delete that. Let's throw in the draw. Draw is really fun because you can throw in guides to kind of help you guide, draw what you want to make. So let's go ahead and edit the guides. And you have some values here, like the size of the brush that you have right here. The higher the, the value, the larger the brush. Uh, then you have your uh, erase options here, then your undo and redo. And then right here you have a clear. So we can draw something here. It'll generate. Now we have this. Just some basic noise. And I still have that 500 meter set here, so let's go ahead and change that. Too large. There we go. Alright. There we go. And you can see what we drew is now on here. So we can draw our terrain if we want. And this is really nice when I make mesas, because this already looks like a mesa. All we have to do is just go in and throw in some filters to generate something different. Uh, we can erase parts of it, and then it'll update here. It just takes a minute to update. So now that part is off right there. And uh, we can just erase all of it, and it won't update until I let go. And I just realized that this isn't all the way in the capture window. Sorry. So let's go ahead and do this again so we can change our brush size here and just draw something basic like that and then it'll update here and now we have this mountain ridge and if you're used to uh, geo control um, it's kinda similar to geo control where you can draw your points and it'll do what it needs to do I like that I really liked geo control I haven't used world creator I think that's what it's called now um, at all, but it used to be created by a nice fellow um, that just couldn't really keep up on it, I guess, and he sold it or it was bought out or something. Uh, but in any case, uh, that's what we have. There is, we can go in and uh, choose Erase, change our brush size, and we can erase all of this. And you kind of get the point. Um, you also have the different options here to choose, or different settings here to change the scale and displacement and the sprawl and stuff like that when you're creating your landscape so you can go through and change these around however you like depending on what you need and I'll let you experiment with those but for the most part drawing is you just drawing your terrain and gives you a little bit more creative freedom rather than relying totally on a procedurally generated landscape Next we have file, and this one's very simple. Uh, we don't have anything here we can do really, but you just import a file here, like a displacement map, and you can edit that if you like. That one's super easy. Now we have island, and island's gonna be similar to draw. So we're gonna pop in the island node here, but then we have to edit the island. And right here, some of the settings right here that you have with it are gonna be more pertinent to an island scenario. So we're just going to go ahead and put one little dot there, and you can kind of see how that creates an island. And since islands are very low to the sea level, uh, we got to change the scaling down to be quite low. Looks like it's not going to do it there for us, so we probably have to change some of these other settings. But in any case, um, or actually, you know what we could do is change the height. Sorry. maybe and then change the scale to be higher there there we go now it's doing its thing all right 
There, now we can see what we're doing. Uh, and you can see how that created just a nice little island based on our settings here, our breakage, complexity, and our seed. And then we can add little blobs of islands all around here. And that one actually kind of looks like Africa, but rotated. Uh, and that makes uh, creating islands super easy. We can do something large like that, and we have now a nice big island chain like right there. Uh, making islands is super easy. And it's just as simple as dragging and dro clicking where you want to place things. Um, and again, I will let you play with these settings to kind of decide what you like. But it's similar to the draw, but in, it has more uh, pertinent island settings. Let's go delete that. Now we get into the more basics of um, the more basics of nodes. So we have a Perlin, and you, if you're used to World Machine in any way, Perlin noise or any kind of 3D application really, uh, Perlin noise is very helpful and uh, very powerful. You can do a lot of stuff with it, and it's usually the most basic of all noises that you use when you're starting to create your landscape. So let's change the height here. We'll change it to be a little higher and the scale to be a little bit lower. That way we get a little more bumpy looking landscape. There we go. And we can change these around based on some very basic Perlin noise settings, like our scale and our octaves. Octaves will, if you decrease that, you'll get less detail in your noise. Um, then you have your noise types, FBM, ridged, or rigid, but I say ridged, billowy. Billowy is really nice. That's a really fun one to play with, but for the most part, I usually just use uh, ridged or FBM. Then you have your seed, your scale, all that fun stuff. You can increase or decrease the scale depending on how noisy you want it. But a nice thing about um, Gaia is that it builds in the warp here for you. So in um, World Machine, you had to connect other generators to other inputs for your node, your Perlin noise. In this case, you don't have to. It's already built in, and you can change these around as much as you want. And the warp frequency and amplitude and octaves all changes the built-in warp for the noise. You can see how that's warping the noise. Then you have your amplitude. That's how strong the warp is. Um, and then you have your octaves, and that, again, just kind of decides how much detail is in the warp. And there we go. You get some really interesting looks with that. So let's go ahead and delete that. Then we have our resource. Resource is uh, one that I haven't played with a whole lot, but you need to input an ID here for it. We're going to skip over that for now. Let's go to Voronoi Plus. The Voronoi Plus is not the same as just your regular Voronoi, which we have right here. So let's look at both of these together. So here we have our Voronoi Plus, and then we have our Voronoi. And you can kind of see the difference in, in settings here. So let's talk about the Voronoi first, actually. So this is a nice cellular noise pattern, really nice for making mountain peaks and uh, valleys and stuff like that. Um, and it, it's another one of those very basic, common noise patterns that you have, kind of like Perlin. And you have your scale and your seed here. And all that does is change the scale, obviously, larger, smaller values, depending on what you want so you have a more noisy Voronoi noise or less and then you have dual and what that'll do is it'll input another uh, Voronoi noise in there to give you additional peaks to work with and again you have your warp options here and then advanced settings which you can change on the X and Y scale so if you wanted to get something more interesting like that you can or you can change it on the Y and get something really ridiculous we we'll change this to zero there we go. So let's just change these back to 1. Hold down Shift. You'll get your incremental values here. We can double the value, but we have to have something there to do it. So let's uh, just a little bit there and then decrease it by 10. There we go. That's close enough. And then same thing here. Let's just go ahead and decrease this to 1. There we go. That's going to bother me. There. <laughs> All right. Um, and then you have your functions here, which kind of changes what the noise shape is. So we have our natural noise, and we have Euclidean, Manhattan, and then we have natural again right there. Um, and then a form. And what these does is it changes the form, the function of the noise here. So we can have more of a plateau 
terrorist style look with C or N, and I don't know what any of these names are. I just go through and memorize what the the pattern is, the form is, and I just go with what I know what. Like if I want something that's going to be really flat and blocky, I know I'm going to go with C. So I, I just memorized it. I couldn't tell you what these names are or what these letters stand for. That's just, uh, you know, you just got to play with them to see what they are. All right. Then you have your Voronoi Plus. Here you have a little bit different thing here. So we have this kind of cell block. It's not going to be as noisy as the Voronoi. So you would probably wouldn't use this so much for landscape generation like you would for the regular uh, Voronoi, but maybe more of an enhance enhancement to another noise. And you have your iterations here, and iterations will just increase the amount of, um, like in this case, how many blocks, blocky noise patterns we have, the cellular noise patterns. We have a noisy edge, and what that'll do is it'll just break up the edge of these patterns a bit. And we can use a Poison uh, distribution, or we can use a random distribution, or even a grid distribution, and that'll just distribute our noise along uh, these different patterns. And then we have our strength, obviously, that's going to increase and decrease the amount of strength we have for our noisy edges. And our density can really increase that quite a bit. And then we have our seed, which will just randomize it. Super easy. Um, like I said, you're probably not going to be using this so much for uh, landscape generation, but probably as an effect to add to another landscape, or even maybe making a continent, perhaps. But Again, you could just play with it, see what you like, turn it, put it into another uh, setup. Uh, okay, so we did Voronoi and Voronoi Plus. Let's go ahead and do Cracks. And cracks is cool because all it does is create cracks, and it has all these different settings you can choose from. And again, you can change the, uh, the values on the X and Y here, and that's just going to change it on the X and Y. Not too much to go over that. If I see this setting again, I'm just going to kind of glaze over it because it's not going to change what it does very much. Uh, you have your seed here, just going to generate random seed. Then your depth, um, it looks like it's going to make these a little bit more thick on the edges. And then our scale, which obviously will increase or decrease this honeycomb pattern we have going on. And you can use that to make like cracky looking grounds for your landscapes. We have dunes. Dunes is cool because you can create some awesome looking sand dunes. Um, or an ocean floor, maybe uh, a wavy beach for some sand uh, that's been hit by the waves quite a bit. And again, all the same kind of settings here. You have your scale, your strength, your height, all that stuff. They're all pretty self-explanatory. But you have a different method here. You can use chaotic. So say you uh, are in a very windy area where there's a lot of uh, wind that's kind of changing around the dunes a bit. Now you have a more chaotic looking dune rather than just a dune C, which is what you'd probably see in like maybe the Sahara or something. Let's go ahead and delete that and give me just one second. Okay, let's go over the gradient. Gradient is just a gradient and you can put multiples of these gradients together with a combiner to make like a nice little valley uh, area. And you can change the direction of the gradient like that. You can choose what the edge behavior will be. So if you want it to mirror or you want it to repeat uh, or you just want an edge, you have that. The The mirror will try to repeat one edge to another. Um, it's very similar to other 3D programs, but if you just want it to be flat, just do edge. There we go. Um, and then the scale, obviously, it's going to increase and decrease how much of a gradient there is. Um, let's go ahead and change that around. There we go. Now we have multiple gradients there. And you can choose different types of gradients. We have linear, radial, um, which is just a nice little radial gradient, or a helix, and that'll give you a nice helix gradient like that. All right, let's go to the next one. Line noise. This one is really nice. Uh, you can do similar things with the Voronoi and the Perlin, uh, but if you don't want to go through and set all that up, you can just use a nice little line noise, and you can use this to break up uh, straight edges in your landscape or to add a little slight variation to your landscape. And I like to include the... Uh, there's a filter called uh, Displace, an adjustment, sorry, an adjustment called Displace. I like to add the line noise to the Displace, and it breaks up the line noise a bit, like that. And you can just increase the value 
of the displace node till you get what you want. And I like to add this on my uh, edges or my slopes of my terrains to kind of break them up a bit, makes them look really nice. Uh, but we're going to get into that ad adjustment a little bit later. But that's line noise, very simple. You have different types of noises here. You have your Gaussian, you have your Poisson, Impulse, and Uniform. I mostly just use random. There we go. Super simple. Plates is nice. You can imagine uh, multiple uh, landforms kind of coming together and hitting and f making this uh, plate grade or uh, the slopey look here um, that's what it's that's what it's making obviously <laughs> so it's hard to, to explain it um, you see this a lot in southern Utah and Arizona um, especially down in the Goblin Valley area you have these like slopey areas where they kind of hit two landforms hitting against each other and one pushing up over the other and one going underneath it and again you have all your different options here which are pretty uniform across all the other nodes in this case you have your collision you can increase or decrease the collision and you get like this more noise look going on you can kind of change the slant around by choosing the slant option there and then inverse that as well and you can change the steepness as well of your collision so uh, that's about all you get with plate it's a really nice look to it's a really nice uh, no noise pattern to make interesting looking landforms. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go with slope noise, and slope noise is my all time favorite. And I don't think it's used enough. I don't see a lot of people using it. Um, but you can do the sim you can do something similar by using a slope noise and a displace. Um, but in this case, what you have is an awesome, awesome embedded value called stratified. And this stratifies the noise itself rather than the entire form of the landscape it just stratifies the noise and you get this really awesome looking rock look um, and again you have like your scale your displacement how much you want it to displace on the slope and then your direction of the noise that's about it they're all very similar uh, settings so I'm not going to go over them too much all right give me just a sec and you kind of see how you can put together the slope noise and the plates together to make some cool looking effects or pretty much anything really. So let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, the first thing that we're actually going to build is going to be based on the slope noise. I already have an idea for it. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, we're going to go over that pretty well. And then we have a crater and that does exactly what it says. It's going to create a crater like that. It's just a nice little noise broken crater. And again, you have all the same similar settings here, but now you have like an impact or a volcanic crater. And it just depends on what you want. This makes it look more like a shield volcano. Um, but again, you can change these values to get what you want. You can input this crater in with like another uh, noise generator like Perlin and get some interesting looking landscapes. Let's go back to impact. And as you can see, depending on the profile, your settings change. And I just want to reiterate just play around with these and see what you want a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory like your outer scale and your inner scale things like that we're gonna delete it let's go on to the next one fault is really awesome I like using fault as well uh, I use this a lot and all it does is it creates a fault line in your landscape and you can change pretty much everything that you need about it the width create like a canyon the depth how deep the uh, uh, the fault goes you can shrink it which all it does is it instead of taking up the entire landscape it just shrinks it more towards like a starting point point. and we can do little small values here to see what it does make like a little crack in like a nice little area right there and then you have your scale and then your chaos and how much chaos you want inside of your fault and you can decrease all the chaos and just get a nice more straight line you can change the location on the X and the Y, your angle, where you want it to kind of appear at based on an angle. Then you have your seed, which just randomizes it. Fault is nice. Makes really cool looking um, effects on your landscape, especially when you want to make canyons and whatnot. Igneous is awesome. Igneous gives you more of an igneous rock looking uh, landscape. 
and this makes it look really cool if you're trying to make like a really young earth look um, and I really like playing around with this quite a bit too uh, it's one of my more favorite la uh, noise patterns but it's a very simple noise you just have your scale and your power and then you have this option for channels and when you include the channels all it does is it includes small little channels in your landscape might not be very well apparent in this uh, current setup but you just select it and you get these little channels going through your landscape and then your seed obviously just changes the seed value so let's go ahead and delete that and uh, let's use another one here which is mountain and this is really nice to use for hero mountains it's like a mountain range that you need or, or like a mountain peak that you need really close to the camera or maybe in the background that takes up a good portion of the the background of your scene and uh, again you just have a whole bunch of different things here you can change that are pretty common across other nodes but you have types here so we have a gives us this kind of look we have like a dual peak going on we have a peak right here and a peak right there and then we have B then we already saw C and we have D and they all just include different type of warp patterns and noise patterns and it really comes down to what you want um, in your mountain and increase or decrease these values trying to decide what you like don't keep the defaults um, even though some of the defaults are nice just play with these values and see what you like and then you have your height here so you have like a natural height makes the height of the of the the peak a little bit taller than we have enhanced which probably makes it look a little bit more you know usable in some situations and we have equalized like that and just depending on these values here you might get these little plate looking things uh, but in any case that's mountain you can use that to create some hero mountains we have range and this is just like a mountain range so you see a range right here we have one starting right there and right here and we can change the height of these ranges and all that does is again just changes the height of them then we have our scale we can decrease the scale and probably get um, more friendlier looking ranges that we can use um, closer to the camera or we can increase the scale and now we have ranges that we can use for like wide sweeping uh, landscape shots our definition just in increases the definition in the noise so we can see some more noise pattern coming through and then again just our seed we have some advanced settings here where we can change the scale on the X and Y that's it and then we already went over Voronoi so those are the primitives inside of Gaia um, some of them are very basic some of them are extremely advanced and uh, it just depends on what you want to make so in the next video we're gonna go over some adjustments and some filters um, we might not go over all of the adjustments just ones that I commonly use and then we'll hit on some of them a little bit later um, just because some of them can take a long time to explain it I don't want videos to be as long as this one so we're gonna start by making a landscape inside of uh, Gaia and we're gonna do it with the slope noise so I'll see you in the next one